being a self-taught developer is like being in the wild without weapons. You're all alone and left exposed to the dangers that you have no control over. And in this case, the dangers is learning how to code. And you know, the saddest thing about us self-taught developers is statistically speaking, 90% of us are going to end up failing or quitting code. And to be in that 10% that do succeed, you need four things to survive. You need the right routine. You need the right mindset. You need the right support group and you need the right roadmap. And also we're going to have some actionable steps for you in this video where you're going to have to take action and just do the work. So if you're uncomfortable with that, please, this video is not for you. This channel is not for you. But if you want to change your life and actually be a developer and actually provide something to the world and make more money, then continue watching. Watching. First things first is your mindset. How you see the world is defined by your mind. The right mindset will literally set you apart from your competitors. And if you can have that right mindset, which we will talk about right now, you would be unstoppable. Just think about it, right? Most people quit because they have that bad mindset. They think, oh my God, I can't learn this. JavaScript is too hard. Python is too hard. That's a bad mindset. That's why I quit so many times with code. It's because of this bad view on code and this bad belief belief that I couldn't learn code. So the mindset that you want is a growth mindset. And all a growth mindset is, is the belief that you can learn something. You can also call this like a student mindset, but all it is, is when you're in face of a problem, you believe that although you are struggling right now, you will eventually get it. And I promise you, please, if you get anything out of this video, it should be that your mindset in code matters more than the writing of code itself. If you believe you can do something, I swear to God, you can do almost anything in life. So the actionable step for this section, which is your mindset, will be to analyze and study how you're thinking when in the face of problems. In face of your code, how do you think? When you are running into bugs and you're struggling with a piece of code, are you getting mad at yourself? Are you beating yourself up because you're struggling? Or are you calming yourself down, you're, you're taking it step by step, and you're walking through it slowly. The next aspect of our survival guide to being a self-taught developer is building out your roadmap. What's the main benefit of going to university or a bootcamp for coding? Most people say it's the guidance and the structure, right, to, uh, to learning something. And uh, although that is true for the most part, you, we can actually build out our own structure as self-taught developers. And again, if you want to survive as a self-taught developer, you have to do this. And when I talk to a lot of developers, they think that just because they're self-taught and they're not in these formal places means that they don't need structure. If anything, you need more structure than the people that are in university because you're on your own. And now that we have our good mindset and this belief that we can do anything, now it's time to build out your roadmap. I have, a, I have a web developer roadmap for everyone to use who want to be self-taught developers, which I'll leave in the link in the description. But if you're in like game development or whatever the thing you are in, like cybersecurity, build out your own roadmap. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, nor does it have to be like the greatest thing ever. And an actionable step for the roadmap section right now will be to build out your own roadmap. And again, you can always switch it, but build out that roadmap, build out that structure, because I promise you, you will be much more consistent with what you're doing and you'll get more work done. The third aspect of our survival guide to being a developer is your routine. You see, when you see a good developer, you think, oh, that guy is very gifted. However, most of the time they were just consistently showing up. They were consistently doing the work and they were constantly just showing up. And again, the main benefits of a university and a boot camp is that structure that comes from a routine and the roadmap. Like if you're in a class, right, you have to have a specific routine of how you're doing things. You have to routinize how you're working. You have to work, maybe do homework one or two hours per day. And that is how you are improving. And that's how students in those areas of the, of the coding space improve. So for us self-taught developers, I'm trying to be as blunt as possible, but if you actually wanna do something, you have to be working every single day or like five, six days a week for three to four hours. But by having this three to four hour daily routine of working and working and working, you're gonna make coding a habit, you're gonna make it structured, and you're gonna be a professional because you're constantly showing up. I promise you, once you start doing this, you will see the craziest growth in code. I went four or five months with this very stagnant growth. As soon as I implemented this routine of constantly working, I saw the craziest growth in code. I started making applications and I actually saw results for the first time. So the actual 
actionable step for this routine section of the video is to build out a routine that fits you. Now, the final aspect of our survival guide to being a self-taught developer is the support group. Personally, my favorite thing about university was the support you got from professors and like guidance counselors. And one big thing missing from a lot of self-taught developers like quote unquote diet is the support. However, luckily for us, we're in 2023, 2024, whenever you're watching this video, we have online networking. And yes, it's never gonna be as perfect as a university networking event and you know, actually meeting future employers, but online applications like LinkedIn, Twitter, um, whatever, Discord, I don't know if you wanna be on Discord, but these things are perfect for networking. And by having that support, you're getting the benefits from a university, which is the network. And again, although it's not as good, you're getting that help that you much need. And in the face of problems, or if you wanna get a job, you can resource to that to get those jobs and to get those your, your foot through the door. So the applicable step for this section of the video is to apply to LinkedIn, make an account, apply to Twitter, just start posting, start networking with people. And I promise you, you will never regret this because you're actually making friends in code. You're exposing yourself to the networking space and you're and you're getting to know people. Nonetheless, that has been the full survival guide to being a self-taught developer. If you want more videos on mindset, check out this video right here.